Hello, welcome to part three of the drop in, drop out uh, local co op multiplayer tutorial uh, that's set up in Unity. Um, in the last episode, we set up so players could drop in to the uh, game. Here I am with uh, two controllers and my keyboard. And I'll just punch my microphone while I'm at it. So I'm on my keyboard here on the controllers. And um, you can see we're all moving independently. And everything is hunky-dory. But we can drop in. We can't drop out. Uh, so let's get that sorted in this episode. So if we just go back over to our game manager, uh, we can see leave action here. Um, in last episode, we set it up so when the player holds the back button or the escape key for 0 0.5 seconds, they will they they should leave the game. That should be triggered. So what we want to happen here is that when this action is triggered, uh, we're going to check which device the trigger belonged to. Uh, we're going to find the player that use that is using that controller. And then we're going to pass it over to an unregister method, uh, which will just help keep things organized. And there we're going to have to check if the playlist is bigger than one, because uh, if it is, otherwise there's only one player. Because uh, if it's not bigger than one, there's obviously only one player in the game and we don't want them to be able to leave if that's the case. they'll Obviously it'd make more sense for them to go to start and like quit, not just holding escape to just leave the game because they won't quit the game, it'll just take them out of it. Okay, so... What we're going to do, uh, void, leave, action, input, callback, context, context. So if we go to if the player list is greater than one, then, sorry, if the player list dot count is greater than one, my mistake, then we're going to do some stuff. Uh, what we're going to do is, so we're going to say for each player, uh, we use var just as a catch all kind of variable. So for each player in the player list, we're going to search for all of the devices that are registered to that player, um, because a player could theoretically have multiple devices connected to it. Um, it could have a keyboard and a controller. The keyboard and mouse is obviously multiple um, devices in that list. So we need to just search for all of the um, all of the devices just to find a match. So. We have another for each loop. So for each player in the player list and for each device, uh, oh, sorry, each device in player dot devices, then if the device is, so if device is not equal to null and the Context dot control dot device is equal to device. Then we're going to unregister player, which is a method we're going to create in a second, and we're just going to pass the player through. And then we're going to return out of the loop because we don't obviously we don't need to. Uh, sorry, we're going to break out of the loop because we don't need to carry on. Um, obviously, if that's not the case. So let's just go back through this. Just I know it can be a bit confusing because multiple loops. So if the playlist is bigger than one, so if there's two or more players, then we're going to search, we're going to get a reference to kind of each player in that playlist. And we're going to check whether the device, then we're going to, we're going to go through each player in the playlist and we're going to see uh, what devices they have registered to them. And if the context.control.device, which is the, the device that was used to prompt the leave action. So if I press back on my um, Xbox Series X controller here, uh, that will be the device that, that will be the control device that caused the context to happen, which triggered the leave action. So if the controller that the player is using, so if the controller that, the button was pressed on is registered to a player. We're going to unregister that player from the game and then we're going to break out of the loop because we don't need to carry on searching. Um, I don't know why I made so much white space. Let's just get rid of all of that. 
And obviously, we need to now make the unregister player method. Which is going to take in an uh, player input called player input. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, first of all, we're going to remove the player from our player list because they want to leave the game. And then if the pl player left game let's start again if the player left game event is not equal to null so if there are people listening out if there are methods listening out for that event then we can call it and we can pass in our player input and again the player input is the component on the top level empty player that we made um, that is where we're accessing these kind of like the devices um, and stuff like that. It's this player input, which is this, this class, this uh, component is keeping the reference to the devices. That's what we're using. So we're, we're passing that over. And then from that, we can get all of the other components on the player. So we're going to shout that the players left the game and say which player it is. And then we are going to destroy the player input dot transform dot parent dot game object. So we're going to remove the player from our player list that we're keeping track of all the players in the game. We're going to say that the player has left the game and which player it was for so other scripts can listen out for that. And then we're going to physically remove the game object from the world. So we're at player one here, and the playlist has one in it, so this shouldn't work. If I'm, I'm holding down escape on the keyboard, nothing is happening, because uh, we're obviously the only player in the game. If we press um, A, we are now the second player. If we press back, uh, nothing works, of course. So what have we done? Leave action dot enable, leave action dot performed, leave action context. Playlist count is greater than one. Uh, okay, let's just debug dot log error. Well, debug dot log. A bit of debugging later. Uh, the issue was that this was break, not return. Um, I think I'm not 100% sure what the issue is. I think with break, I'm breaking out of this loop. And it's trying to access multiple players in the playlist. But by this point, I've already removed a player from the list. So now this has changed. Uh, what I actually wanted was return which gets us out of this uh if statement it kind of breaks us out of everything completely so we wouldn't register the player and then we just disregard this um because we would basically i was going back to like here with the break but by that point the player list had been modified so it's actually here that uh, we needed to get out of this whole loop so that's been fixed again it's uh, the joys of coding, bit breaking. Annoyingly, in my notes, it said return. I thought I was being smart by having it say break. I thought that'd be better, but what do I know? Okay, so we can move. We can press a button on the controller. 
then we can press back and we can press start or A or whatever, join again, and then we can leave, and we can join, and we can leave. So we can drop in, and now we can drop out. So when the player leaves, just like um, we can do on player joined, uh, we can do on player left as well. So when the player leaves the game, we could say debug.log. Bye. Just like that. So now if we start a new player and then we press back, leave action triggered. Bye. And they they go. They say bye. Uh, we won't actually be doing anything with this um, in our in this tutorial, but I just thought I'd let you know that that was there in case you did want to do anything. Uh, for example, you could play a sound every time a player left, and then that way it doesn't it doesn't really matter which player it is. Um, it's different from the unregister because the unregister we're doing very some we're doing something very specific. We we want to have um, the player unregistered from the game. Um, it's kind of it's different. We're removing them from the game. Um, so yeah, you press back, <coughs> it says bye. The player leaves. You got this on player left. Uh, we don't need to do anything with it yet. If you want to do something like you want to display a message or play a sound in the on player left, this is where you could do it. Every time a player leaves, just like boo, like a boo sound. That's where you could do it. Or you could do like a chicken noise or something. But anyway, that is the end of part three of our tutorial series. So again, just as a recap, we can move around with player one. If we hold down escape, nothing happens because we've got a player. If we press um, start on our other controller or A or whichever button you've set up to be, we've got player two. We can hold down back on the controller and the player leaves, the player can rejoin again by pressing start or A. If we press escape on the controller, on the keyboard. Yeah, so the player can leave and just got one player all on his own. We can join again and we're back. So that's it for this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit. So that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when the next part of the tutorial goes live. As always, the project files for this video and all the other tutorials on my channel are over on Patreon, uh, as well as the entire series of this uh, video. So if you don't want to wait, uh, if you don't want to wait for the next one to come out in a week's time go over to subscribe on Patreon. You can have access to all of the videos all up front. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.